we gotta create the set identity, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Right here, void set identity. Okay, so how do we set the identity? Well, first of all, we gotta create um, the identity. Um, we, we have to do it only to the local player. You cannot set the identity of the other players because you wanna do it locally and then send it to the other with the server. So how do we do that? So if, um, if it's not the local player, so meaning that if it's a player that's already on the server, then what we do, we take the identity that's sent from the server. So transform, or this dot transform, yeah. This dot transform dot name, so we, we are setting the name, is equal to uh, the player unique name. Okay, so that's the one that's coming back. And, uh, and else, if it's a local, so here I'm gonna say case when it is the local client player, then what do we do here? Then we need to create it. We need to create the um, ID. So how do we create it? Well, transform.name and is equal to, we gotta make it. So let's say make unique identity. Now, obviously, I don't have this method yet, but we're about to create it. So I'm just gonna copy this and make it below that. So, um, by the way, to make the identity, this is a string that we're passing. So this is gonna be private. Actually, let's just make it, we don't need to make it private. So just string, make unique identity. And that's going to return a string now. Let's create the unique identity. How do we create the unique identity? By using the network instance ID, using this ID, the, the network instance ID to make it unique, okay? All right, so we're gonna get the net identity. That would be string. Let's create a new string, unique name is equal to, let's add the word player in front of it, player and then the um, player plus the network identity, which is uh, the way we, we did it earlier. So player net ID dot to string, because the ID is not, as you can see the ID, if you look at the player net ID, it's not, uh, it's not a string. So we are changing it to a string, dot to string. All right. So we have the unique name. Now we can just return it. So return. Oh, by the way, the best, the easiest way is just to to return it straight, you could just do like return player plus this. Okay, so we're just basically creating the string. All right, so that's a quick way. Now, uh, let's keep on going. Um, we still have not told the network identity. So how are we going to do that? Let's work on this. We need a string name here and the identity you guys should already know what it is. It's the uh, the player unique name. So player unique name is equal to name. All right. Now, if you uh, go back up, you see that that's something we still have not worked on. Is whenever we um, we set up the um, the name, we need to do it in the update because at at no point we actually are setting the identity. So let's do it here. All right, so we're going to say first, let's see if it's set up or not. If transform.name, so let's look at the name of the player, is equal to empty, so basically if there's no name, or if it's equal to the default one, which is the Iron Man name. So transform.name is equal to, that would be Iron Man clone. If I, if I believe so, that would be Iron Man clone, like this. Yes, that's the one that would come up right away. Now, I'm gonna double check that. How do I double check this? Well, I go back to the game and when I press play, so I just press play and I'm gonna go on LAN host and as you can see, I have the, oh, okay, so the name is wrong. It's Iron Man Prefab Clone. Good thing I came and checked this out. All right, so going back here, so Iron Man Prefab Clone, okay. And now what I want to do is set the identity. All right, so if we don't have the identity, we will set it here. Okay. 
and I'm almost done. Now the only thing that I need to change is the comment tell server my identity. I put a temporary identity, but we know that the identity will actually be the one that we created. So that would be make unique identity. And that's a method, so call it. All right, so we're calling this method and that makes a unique identity. All right, I'm gonna save this and now test it. All right, by the way, let me do some cleanup. I don't need this anymore. I'm gonna remove the to-do and uh, I can remove this to-do as well. Right, let's go back, make sure to save, go back to Unity. If I press play, instead of Iron Man Prefab Clone, it should say the name of the new client. So check the, uh, check the hierarchy. I'm gonna click on LAN host and there we go. It says player one. So now if I do it twice, if I, um, if I create it again, so I'm gonna press command B and I'm gonna have two players. It would say player one and player two. If I had three players, it would say one, two and three and so on. By the way, it's not always one, two, and so on. Uh, it's, it depends on what the uh, network ID wants to send, okay? If it, especially if it's a game that has been uh, played for a long time, the network ID might change. All right, we'll press play and press LAN host. Go back to the other game and press LAN client. And as you can see now, we have two different names, player one and player two. Excellent, that's it. Now we have unique IDs that we can use for the fireballs that we're going to do in the next lecture.